Welcome back to the show. We have with us Eric Trump. It's great being it's here. It's great to see you. Yeah, so as always. The moment in the debate where your father went after George W. Bush and the Iraq War, that's not something any political consultant would ever counsel a candidate to. They would say, Bush isn't going to win this. Leave him alone. Yeah. Your dad did it anyway. Was that, why did he do that? Listen, I think my father's the type of guy. He was totally against the Iraq War. We went in there. Yep. We spent trillions of dollars, right? I mean, a lot of people got hurt. I mean, a lot of amazing vets, no different than you, Pete. You know it better than anybody. And I mean, what do we have to show for it now, right? right. I mean, we never took the oil. He was saying the whole time, guys, if you're going to go in there, take the oil, take the oil. At least repay the country for the sacrifice that we're making. And I think it was a major blunder, um, you know, of, of, of that presidency. And he's just a very, very honest guy. He's going to come out and he's going to say that. And I was actually kind of proud of him for saying that. And also, you have to remember, right? I mean, he's clearly the front runner. Everybody on that stage had to go after him. They had no other playbook other than to go after, you know, Trump. And so he also has to fight back. And he's a great counterpuncher. Eric, uh, on the Iraq War, obviously a dis lot of discussion to be had sure. about foreign policy. Why not a discussion about 2011, the abandonment of a successful surge? Why not make yeah. that the hill to die on, as opposed to go to George W. Bush? and just talk, call the entire Iraq war a disaster? Yeah, well, listen, I think it's both. I think, I think my father said, listen, once you're in, you also don't want to get out, right? I mean, once you're in and once you have it, we shouldn't have gotten out. So, I mean, he certainly criticizes Obama for that decision, and I think we all do, right? I mean, that was a foolish decision because we were there and we had made a lot of progress, et cetera. But I think all else equal, you know, he just, he sees the financial toll it take, took on this country being in there for as long as, you know, we were. And we've got real problems. I mean, we've had $19 trillion worth of debt. We just crossed it the other day. I mean, the amount of infrastructure that we need to invest in this country. I mean, the fact that our educational systems are failing. I mean, we've got real, real problems. And he just said, listen, uh, you know, why go in there, destabilize the Middle East, really create a hornet's dust, spend all this money, you know, and, and, and what have we gotten for it? And right. I mean, that was really his message. Well, President George W. Bush says his brother Jeb is the man to fix it, not Donald Trump. And, uh, and Jeb did get some help from his brother on the campaign trail yesterday in North Charleston. And he did take a shot at your father, but didn't mention him by name. Let's listen. Strength is not empty rhetoric. It is not bluster. It is not theatrics. Real strength, strength of purpose, comes from integrity and character. These are tough times. And I understand that Americans are angry and frustrated. But we do not need someone in the Oval Office who mirrors and inflames our anger and frustration. We need someone who can fix the problems that cause their anger and frustration, and that's Jeb Bush. Eric, the Bushes are well loved in South Carolina. They've been treated well in, in elections in years past. Could this actually backfire the attacks that your father has been placing on, on not just Governor Bush, but, but on George W. Bush? His approval ratings are among Republicans 84% right now. Could it backfire? Well, listen, I thought it was interesting that he used the integrity word, right? Because my father has more integrity than any man I've ever met. I mean, you know, when somebody's loyal to him, he will do absolutely anything to them. And he's also the type of guy that if somebody hits him, right? And remember, Jeb spent $100 million. The large, you know, large part of that has been, you know, placing negative ads against, you know, my family, you know, my father, et cetera. So, you know, he's also willing to go on, on the attack, and that's really what he's had to do. And listen, I think he's, I think he's done it very well. You know, you see, you see um, you know, George come out, and I think that's kind of Jeb's last card. I mean, Jeb really hasn't done well in the polls. It's kind of been sad. He spent a lot of money. I mean, that's really kind of the last card he has to play. It's kind of his proverbial Hail Mary. I'm not sure if he had any other choice but that. But, you know, he spent a lot of money against my father, right? My father has to go after him at some point. I mean, he's just spent so much, so much money going after him in terms of negative ads. So there's, it's not an overstatement to say Republicans in Washington, most of them truly hate the Trump campaign. The official Republican response to the president's State of the Union address included an attack sure. on your father's campaign. Now your dad is saying that the RNC, the Republican National Committee, has basically broken its pledge of neutrality and suggested he might run third party if they don't knock it off. Is that a Listen, real threat? I don't think he's going to need to. You know, but it is as, as a son, right, as a guy who loves my father tremendously, as a person who sits front row in every single debate. I mean, I haven't missed one debate. I'm by my father's side. It is sad. I mean, it's almost like that teacher in school picking their favorite student, right? They might not be the best student but it's their favorite student for whatever reason. I mean, you see how unobjective it is. You see kind of these little clicks, and it's, it's very sad. I mean, the Republican Party should get behind the best candidate, the person who has the best ability to win. And, and my father's really started a revolution in this country. I mean, people are sick of what's happening in government, right? I mean, that's why his poll numbers are, are where they are. I mean, they're really, really sick of it. They don't want a, a Washington insider. And he's doing great. It would be nice to see a party rally behind that. If something were to happen, does he stick by his pledge, no third party run? 
Listen, I don't know. I mean, it's a great question for him. I, I mean, I think all else equal, he certainly wouldn't want to, and I don't think he's going to have to. I mean, I think we're going to do very, very well in South Carolina. I think we're going to go into the caucuses in Nevada and do amazingly well. And then, obviously, we have Super Tuesday. Um, I don't think he's going to need to, but um, he would like to be treated fairly. And, and by the way, and they should. Just out of general principle, yep. he right. should be treated fairly. Eric yeah. Trump, thank you so much for your time. Thanks That's for coming by. Thanks for playing along with us with the super, uh, <laughs> super models. Yeah, yeah, thanks. You almost got me divorced this morning. I, 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 I really appreciate it. You were really it. good at that. It was all for TV, I promise. Thanks a lot.